O God, be gracious to me, a sinner, and have mercy on me. Blessed is our God, now and always, and forever and ever. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For heavenly peace and the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For peace in the whole world and stability of the holy churches of God and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remembering our most holy, pure, Blessed and glorious Lady, the Theotokos, and our Virgin Mary, with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. To you, Lord, for all glory, honor, and worship are you due, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Hello dear brothers and sisters, today we will be talking about something very difficult and perhaps the most difficult thing uh, that we find in the New Testament which we call in the theological language eschatological conversation between our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and his disciples. Therefore, as we always do, let us begin with prayer in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Shine within our hearts, loving Master, the pure light of your divine knowledge and open the eyes of our minds that we may comprehend the message of your gospel. Instill in us also reverence for your blessed commandments, so that having conquered all sinful desires, we may pursue a spiritual way of life, both thinking and doing all those things that are pleasing to you. For you, Christ our God, are the light of our souls and bodies, and to you we give glory together with your Father, who is without beginning, and your all holy, good, and life creating spirit, now and forever. Amen. So the conversation happens between the Lord and one of his disciples in today's gospel where he, the disciple, points out to the temple which was the temple of Solomon built in Jerusalem and points out to the magnificent structure of it and the stones by which they were built. And there are a couple of conversations about the temple uh, this is one and then there's another one where the Lord tells them in this particular conversation that this temple will be destroyed in the other conversation he asks them saying that if you destroy this temple I will build it or rebuild it in three days now, these are two interconnected uh, texts, interconnected stories that we can draw out some basic and very important information for our spiritual life and well-being. Number one, this story that we hear, uh, the Lord is telling about the future will happen to the temple. There are two reasons for it. One is that that's what was going to historically happen and he predicts that to happen in the future. But as we know, all prophecies point out to Christ. So even his own prophecy points out to himself because now the temple was going to be replaced. And when in the second story, our Lord and Savior talks about the destruction of the temple and his restoration of the temple in three days, later on it says the disciples remembered these words and they understood that he was speaking about his body. So we know that Christians, the disciples of Christ, more precisely, are the temple of God. Both individually, as persons, we are the temple and the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit, but also collectively, 
we are uh, comprising the body of uh, Christ where two or three gathered in my name in agreement there I am with them he says so both collectively and individually personally we are the temples of the living God in today's gospel however the text is more eschatological meaning that something that will happen in the future and this text has been confusing for many centuries for many people and in fact the Lord himself points out to that confusing aspect of it saying that many will come and say that in my name and try to confuse you and that has to do also with the eschatological reality of Christianity where there is the present from which he's speaking to his disciples and then he's talking about the future but even further future which is the kingdom of God the eternal time in which our Lord and Savior will come uh, to uh, claim us to resurrect us and to elevate us into his kingdom so now both the destruction of the temple and also in the end of the text he mentions things about the end times that after the destruction of the temple uh, wars will happen nation will arise against nation king up against kingdom earthquakes will happen and many will be confused by these signs and he says however these are just the beginning of the end times not the end times now we know that even christians have tried to guess what the end times are uh, try to go through the book of revelation that uh, speaks more concisely about the end times and uh, the coming of the Lord the second time and try to confuse themselves and confuse others. Some of them perhaps did not do it in purpose, some of them did. It's not my place to judge who did what and how they affected the history of humanity. Nevertheless, that happened. And even in that time, before his crucifixion or resurrection our Lord and Savior warned both his disciples and us through the text that we have today that no one knows about his second coming except the Father it is the Father who decides when it was time for the end of the history so that the kingdom in its fullness will prevail however humans are curious and as they say curiosity gets the best of the cat and we have created this confusion for many centuries uh, over and over again even at the end of the 20th century i remember that when i was a young uh, person there was some kind of predictions that that was the end of it and as we approached the 2000 that will be the end of the times when i was a young boy i remember reading some scientific magazines saying that by 2000 the earth will be covered under water and that we will be eventually pulled into the sun at one point in time and burned and there were some predictions time-wise connected to those eventually none of the universe is eternal it is eventually collapses into itself or it gets pulled into one another and collide with one another and that will be the end of our planet when that happens Nevertheless, our Lord and Savior gave us specific instructions not to worry about that. What he tried to advise us is to live our lives according to his plan for our salvation. That we should not worry about the general end of times, but we should worry about what we are to uh, experience in this life. And having said that, he also said that it will come like a thief that we will not be able to even predict seconds before it comes but when it comes we will know because it will be so obvious it will be like the sun rising from all corners of the earth we cannot miss it so there is no way it can come in a way that we will miss it will never come telling us when it's coming so that we're prepared for it nevertheless we need to our li live our lives as if it was going to happen now and here and so it can happen any second and our life can end any second 
and some of our theologians say that when my life is over, that is my end time. When I meet the Lord at the end of my life, that is my end time. And that can come any minute. Remember that we are so fragile, a small vessel in our brain will pop and it's the end of our time here on this earth. And that determines our end time. Because from there, life as we know it exists no more. We enter into the eternal time, which we cannot measure anymore, because we can only measure time here on earth according to what we know. Einstein once said that the best example for understanding the relativity of time is the difference between the time eternal and time uh, measurable, uh, the chronological. He said, imagine sitting at a, in a park with your loved one the time passes you feel like two hours were only one minute compare that to sitting on a hot stove one minute feels like a year so that is jokingly what einstein gave us to understand how time is relative and how time is measured based on our situations and our circumstances. Nevertheless, even further uh, we can push is that once we die, we stop being in the chronological time that we know today. So our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is warning us and telling us, teaching us to be aware of the eternal time and also to be aware of the moment because uh, the eternity is present in a moment and we live our lives moment by moment. This is what we have. The past is past, the future hasn't come yet. And if we place our life in the future, we constantly miss the present. The present is what we have. So in today's gospel, he tells us that the temple of Jerusalem will be destroyed. That actually happened 70 AD by the Roman invasion and the temple was destroyed. And also we know that the curtain on the temple tore from the top to the bottom at his crucifixion. Meaning that was already the sign that the temple does not have that importance that it used to have in the Old Testament. Because the kingdom of God, the presence of God that was behind the Holy of Holies now was revealed through the incarnation, crucifixion and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So then the temple loses its essential meaning. Now we still, coming from Judaism as Christians, have built temples ourselves and we worship God similar ways that Israelites worship God in their temple with one difference that we are in communion now with the resurrected Lord and we represent his body and it is very important however to mention in our times that we are the temple of God and that we should not confuse the real temple with the temple that is built uh, by human hands what that temple represents however in our lives today the temples that we worship in is where we have an appointment with God that's where we gather to invite him to be present with us. Not that he's locked up there and we're going to go find him and elsewhere we cannot find him. But where two or three are gathered in my name, that's the place of the gathering for us. Where we gather in his name and he is present in us and with us there. And that is very important to remember. If we gather elsewhere, whatever that is, as group of Christians, if we still have no temple, we have no roof over our heads, we can stand and pray wherever God wants us to do that. But we also are creatures of location, creatures of habit, creatures of uh, repetition and patterns. And it is very important to have a distinct place where we go to pray so that everyone else knows where that is and we come there. If we got gathered in the woods, we wouldn't have a specific location. Somebody can 
travel this way, if somebody came to travel that way, it can start raining on us, hailing, snowing, wind, whatever, then there would be no space, the sacred space, in which we experience God together as a community. So that is uh, one of the reasons we have a temple, but nevertheless the temple is built according to the structure of the Jewish temple. And so our Lord and Savior today is warning us that we will be confused by those who will come and call us to follow them by telling us that He has come the second time. And that we do not need to worry about. We should not believe anyone who gives us specific space and time. And what is in general the reason uh, uh, for people to predict the future? Uh, most of the time to predict the future is to control. When I tell you what the future holds for me and for you, and I convince you in that, I have authority over you. If I know what's going to happen in the future, and if I can somehow convince you with arguments and with uh, data that I, I told you what's going to happen tomorrow and it happened, and then I'm going to tell you what's going to happen in a month, that will also happen. The sole reason usually is for controlling people. And uh, that is what our Lord and Savior is trying to uh, prevent uh, and predict that do not allow anyone to control over you you only depend on God and live your life now and here without any confusion without any conflict with one another regarding the end times so dear brothers and sisters today I wanted to bring our attention to this that our Lord and Savior points the attention of his disciples away from the stone temple built by human hands to himself because he is the temple of God uh, present amongst them there and that he is predicting also his resurrection in another story not today's uh, gospel but more, nevertheless he also warns and protects them from future confusion about the end times the end times will come it is traveling towards us we don't have to hurry, we don't have to rush. It's like being in a train, the train is moving, uh, regardless whether we are moving inside of the train. And going to the front cart of the train is not going to bring us closer to the next station. Uh, the train will bring us as it moves. And that is how the understanding of the end times should be uh, even more uh, imagine if the train was moving towards the station, but also the station was moving towards the train. That would also be uh, making the coming of the kingdom even faster. We should not rush, we should not hurry, we should not be worried, we should not be afraid. Often people look at economic and social and uh, political situations of certain countries and they inspire each other and themselves with fear that this is the end times. This is going to be for sure the end of it. Uh, what will you do if it was today? That's what's important. What is your plan for today, for now? What are you doing right now? That is what's important because the end time can come right now. It doesn't have to do anything with any presidents or with any uh, geopolitical movements in the world. As, as we find in the gospel, those are good signs, but those are the good signs of the beginning. And that those kinds of calamities happened uh, 2,000 years ago uh, when Israel would, was destroyed, the temple was destroyed. And nowadays uh, there are even some Christian groups and denominations that relate to the coming of the Lord to the rebuilding of the temple because you find that in the revelation and some people are trying to artificially speed up that process but they're wasting their time because they should be building the temple of god that they are they should build the temple and cleanse the temple where the holy spirit dwells instead of uh, speeding up the temple and the physical temple of god to be built in uh, jerusalem 
uh, because at the end of the day, what matters is whether we are ready to embrace the Lord who will come uh, in His power and His glory the second time. Uh, and that is what matters, and that is what we need to be prepared for. The second thing we need to be worried about is uh, that we are gathered in agreement in His name. Uh, the conflicts between Christians should be attended, should be addressed, and that if we cannot love one another, uh, there is going to be no presence of God amongst us. And that is what our Lord said. If you gather in my name in agreement, not in disagreement, but in agreement, in, in love, in communion, there I will be present amongst you. And that is the temple of God as well that is built, the community of Christians. I uh, recently came across to this expression that the term uh, Christian is only used twice or three times in the New Testament, but the t uh, term disciple is used over a uh, hundred times and that is what we need to establish in our hearts discipleship we should follow christ responding to his call we should make ourselves into disciples and we should make disciples of our brothers and sisters our children our friends so that the temple that he came to build will be built that all humans at one point will hear about him and will come to worship him in repentant hearts and build the kingdom of God that is to come now and forever to the ages of ages. Amen.